Oh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to On the Couch. Where do we start about this mighty Geelong Footy Club? The best coach, the best captain, the best backs, the best forwards. They've got the best old blokes, and now they've got the best young blokes coming through. They were just the best team of season 2022. And on Saturday afternoon, it all came together for a glorious 81-point victory over a worthy opponent that just could not go with the Cats when it mattered most for the last time. John Brown, Nick Revolt. We witnessed some greatness. On yeah, the yeah. Good evening, boys. It was great. It was fantastic, and the deserving winner, of course, because they were the best team all year. Now, yes, we know Collingwood could have knocked them over in the qualifying final, but I think they had most other teams covered by about five or six goals, and they proved that on Saturday. They were just sensational. All their players. As a collective, that whole organisation, just an amazing organisation over the last 20 years. You've come up magnificently after your 20-year reunion last night of the 2002 <laughs> Premiership. Oh, yeah, I got stuck with, <laughs> I got stuck with Pikey late in the night, so <laughs> it just we, kept going on. We didn't on know whether we were going to have you today, to be honest. So, so, uh, do you go again next year and the year after? Is that how it works? Or oh, do you roll them all into one event? I, I think I, I think we went hard enough just to have it all just last night. <laughs> I'm happy to have a couple of years There's off. There's a bit of extra resonance in the There voice. is, there yeah, is. Right. There's a bit more gravel. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit more. I think he's just woken up, to be honest. Uh, so I just got out of bed half an hour ago. But uh, yeah, how good is it, though? For these guys, they'll be... And we all have reunions, whether, you know, you don't... Have, no, you no, know, we, hey, no, we don't. No, I just want to stop you right there. We don't, which makes Saturday the biggest yep. day of the year. And yeah. I'm not being a smart yeah, Absolutely it is. I got it, into it, trouble for saying Brisbane were irrelevant last year. I wasn't being disrespectful. No. That's just how it works. You're not... You, see, no one's talking about City. We will in a minute. Yeah. But it, they're not. It's all about Geelong. Well, and what I, love, what I love about it is they did it with absolute class from start yeah. to finish. Yeah. So you go back to round one where... I think we might have done the, the Geelong-Essendon game yeah, together yeah. where we spoke to Chris Scott before the game and, mm. and, and you go right back to there, the class that he showed to put it all out there and say, this is who we are, this is what we're going to do. He was completely transparent right through to the moment they walked off the ground on Saturday Victorious. Yeah. They didn't miss anyone. They didn't let anyone down. They, they, they included everyone in the celebration. Yeah. I just saw it from start to finish, class with a ruthless edge. We're going to take our time and work our way through this and celebrate the Cats. We'll talk about the Swans, but let's start with a man who, if it wasn't his finest moment in footy, Chris Scott was right up there. It does feel like it's been a really long, challenging road. We certainly had our moments where we would question what we were doing and there were plenty of people that were keen to remind us that it was different to the way other clubs go about it. Even now, I kind of think, well, we'll just sort of try to do us. When I started at Geelong, they took a punt on a 34-year-old coach who'd been an assistant for a few years and effectively had no idea what he was doing. We used that analogy of swimming between the flags in waist deep water. We didn't want to do that. We wanted to go at the deep end where it's dangerous and play dangerous footy. Hawkins for the boundary throw in. We know how good he is. And he kicks the first goal in the 2022 grand final. Once again, Hawkins with an inside out slider. He is brilliant at this. To achieve great things in life, you know, the adversity. He's going to be there. Almost lost to the game. All Australian. Playing in the grand final. Set shot. He's living the dream. Tui wants a goal in this grand final as well. Picked up by Close. Comes back to Parfit. He's just come on the ground and kicked the goal. Danger field. The only player out there wearing socks, left foot snap, on the line, Jaconi's got one, the defender who was so brilliant early in the game, kicks his first career goal, does Jaconi in a grand final. This is Everest, this is the pinnacle, this is what it means to be content, I think. Yes, when you wake up this morning, you dream of this, um, all year we've thought about it, we wanted to make the final day and then win it all and to be able to do that is incredible. Yeah, well, a few people were writing us uh, silver foxes off, but there's still a little bit of a tag. It's just monumental. Oh, I'm just, I'm so lucky to play for a club that I barred for as a kid and to be given an opportunity every year to be able to compete at the highest stage. Metaphor for life, really. If you want to do great things, don't expect it to be smooth sailing. You're going to have to shake hands with adversity at some point. And if you can hang in with no guarantee that you'll get the ultimate success, you know, it might be worth it.
She'll be one of the great watches for uh, Geelong supporters, sitting oh, back and yeah. reliving this. She just never gets sick of it. It doesn't get old. And for Chris Scott, you know, the metaphor for life. You just got to put yourself, keep putting yourself up. You get whacked down and knocked down. You get criticised. You put your head up mm. and go again. And of all the things in, that were spoken post game in trying to encapsulate what happened, we'll talk about how Chris got the game on his terms in a mm. moment. John Longmire's post game press conference for me was so profound. He just said that game just was foreign to us. It's mm. no stage. That yeah. Look. Anything like the way we wanted to play, the way mm. sit at a Sydney game. So conversely, you go, OK, let's celebrate the bloke who did get it on his terms from the opening bounce, and that's Chris Scott. Which we've celebrated over the past lo long period, the past decade, really, with Chris Scott, which he's, he's never got the credit he deserves because they haven't franked it with a premiership. But he's always made the opposition play left-handed. Mm. You know, he's like the yeah. great Bill Belichick in, in that way, that... It, he just takes away the opposition's strength so that they're forced to find another way to do it and, and Sydney didn't have the answer. He does that really well. Um, and, and I'm, I'm so glad for Chris. I know he's a mate of mine, but people, he had knockers. He had doubters. Oh, he was given that premiership in 2011. Yeah. Well, you're never given a premiership as a coach. No. Like he's, but so for him to do this just knocks out all the doubters yeah. completely. You cannot doubt his coaching record, what he's done over a sustained period of time. And the other great thing he does, makes the opposition plays left-handed, but he helps... He, uh, he utilises the strengths of his own players. Yep, he helps his players get into the game by playing them in certain positions, moving them around, not letting them rot on the vine uh, You know, throughout a game. He gets them involved early. So let's go to what that actually looks like, right, at the start of the game. So for one of the few times this year, we're, we're sitting there like a spectator and up our end of the ground where we were really, all of a sudden I'm looking at this forward line and I'm going, that's Mitch Duncan at half forward. You know, mm. So Holmes yeah. goes out and the flow on effect that, that comes out is that Duncan goes forward. And you have a look at some of the game time here. So he, he spends 95% of the time forward, which is a season high, which means Isaac Smith's got to go and play wing because Holmes is off. And he goes and plays wing for 99% of the game season high. And then the Stewart mat the match up at the back of the ground. OK, Ryan Clark goes to Stewart. Well, how's that all going to work out and play out? Well, that's OK. We'll free Zach Tui up and oh, let him play. Just put him behind the footy. It was a great beaner at the ground to see Tui. Yeah. Just sit back like the quarterback, the mm -hmm. deepest guy. And, and so he was able to also position his players. And he got great footage of it. Position his players in front of him. So help those bigger guys uh, set up to get in the right position to take the intercept mark. And obviously he had plenty of the football himself. But it was just a real master class from him. But he was the last man out there, or the, the furthest, deepest player. So he was able to control the game from beyond. Well, it's a great ad advertisement for old heads mm. too, isn't it? Because yeah. you've got Smith, Duncan and Tui, the names that we highlighted, who are comfortable playing anywhere because they're experienced and, 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 and nothing's really foreign to them. So uh, we knew what was coming. Well, at least we thought we knew, with, with Clark going to Stewart. So, yeah. so that was the most likely situation because Clark had had success as a defensive forward. But it's not necessarily for Geelong about Stewart, the player. It's Stewart, the interceptor. The role. But because they've, they're comfortable having Tui in that role, Henry's been in that role, the Koning's been in that role, it was easy for them to manipulate the clark Stewart matchup and just yeah. allow someone else to be mm. the, the loose and the deepest. Stewart you know, pushed a bit higher. Yeah. Clark goes, do I go? What are we, and this is taking me somewhere I don't want to go. How's this work? So, Turns behind and there's Tui sitting in the hole. So Stewart is a great player. But he's, he's a great player when he's allowed to play that role. But for Geelong and, and their system, it doesn't really matter who, doesn't matter who does it because they've all done it and gotten it done. Uh, uh, and I really like Mitch Duncan. He has played half forward at times this year, but goes and plays half forward because Sydney have got terrific running defenders, good kicking defenders. Blakey, Lloyd, sometimes in McInerney goes back, young Campbell uh, came on. That, their greatest strength wouldn't be playing on a guy like Mitch Duncan. Mm. So able to exploit that. So he runs around and has you know, nearly 30 touches yeah. and just sets up the game really well and was just so creative. So, because he knew he didn't have that hard matchup. It was a matchup nightmare for the yeah. back line. There was no matchup for Paddy. Paddy McCartan. I'm watching yep. him, obviously. I'm clear. I'm looking right. there and they just wanted a matchup. He close was going up and he's not, not sure whether he goes up or comes back. So, it doesn't take well, it. Well, that was a good, it's a good point, guys. So, this is, you know, did, does John Longmire need to have made a move early with Paddy McCartan? You know, maybe, especially when Reed goes off, just do the rucking from the bench, mm. get McCartan forward. Because you actually look at this footage of the high half forwards for Geelong. So Stengel, Myers, 
close, get right up the ground. And this is early in the, early in the game. Now, this is not going to suit Paddy McCartan, yeah. getting dragged up the ground. Look at them all involved. This is in the defensive 50. Yeah, that's they right. They all touch the ball, and then they're off to the races. So, you're right, it's foreign for Sydney. They don't know, and this is hard to defend against. Yeah, so in that round two game, he, Paddy plays and intercepts and takes seven. Uh, but close kicks four. Now, right here, he doesn't know whether he goes up that high. He doesn't want to go up and play inside their forward 50. No. So he gets lost a bit in the process. So, so you can see McCartan in line with the ball there. And I think this is the next point, is Geelong were really clever with their ball use. Oh. So when you're an intercept player like Paddy McCartan, what do you need up the field? Mm. You need pressure on the ball carrier to force him mm. into dump kicks, to force him in the hurried kicks. But Geelong didn't fall into that sort of game early in the contest. So they maintained possession. Look at this, 26 kicks to four handballs. And it wasn't Geelong kicking the ball like we've seen them do in the past, where it's backwards and sideways and they don't really hurt the opposition. They took ground with yeah. their kicking. So that kick there, you know, effectively it goes to a, to a, uh, a contest. But they knew the pressure was going to come. And mm. if they So the highest pressure of Sydney was in the first 10, 12 minutes, probably. Mm. So there... What do we do? Well, let's kick the ball. Let's yep. not muck around and give them a chance to get heat on. And then as the game wears on, they mark the footy. They That's take right. double the amount of marks throughout the game. Sydney's pressure, can't, you can't go to a well, team it, It's actually it. impossible to put pressure on when you're playing That's kick right. mark footy. But what I thought they did brilliantly, Geelong, was they... A couple of times it looked like, oh, are they are they reverting back to bad habits here, just trying to control the ball? Mm. But but they didn't get hemmed in. They still took ground, was which was the really important distinction from Geelong teams we've seen in the past. That connection in, within that group is as good as I've seen. That they know what each other are doing at yep. any time. You, you know, we can you can bring the NFL into whatever it is. The quarterback throwing the receiver who turns and it's there. Yep. That's almost where they're at. Close and Myers and 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 there. Stengel. They're ping kicking. You you want to watch as we did watch um, Tomahawk and Cameron. They start like dribbling when those yeah, little yeah. blokes get the ball. They start, yeah. they start shaking. They're that excited. Yeah. And, they know and, they're going to get it. And you revert back to the to the change in game style. And we heard from Joel Selwood a couple of weeks ago where he said if you've played half forward in our team for the yeah. last few years, yeah, yeah. it's been impossible. So this was sort of done with them in mind. And then you you come you fast forward to grand final yeah. day. You see it happen, and you just think, gee, this has been. 12 months in the works, and this is how it manifests they, they, on the biggest stage. They have three guys, three of the guys kicked over 50 goals for the year as well. Yeah. So, well, which is very, very rare. And on top of that, Brownie, yeah. we talk about the inside 50 kick, right? Mm. Yeah, we've bemo yeah, I've bemoaned kick. it. You know, the ability to. They've got four of the top 11 yeah. in the competition for retaining possession going inside 50. So you talk about, you know, kicking and retaining possession. It goes, I think, three's Danger, four Stengel, five Isaac Smith, and 11's Jeremy Cameron. And, and Danger probably surprises people. He does. Because yeah. he's been known for helicoptering a them in, breaking a few fingers. His own teammate, Zach Tui, was having a bit of fun with that last he, week. He was too, but he was awesome. You know, I, yeah. I, the great thing, at the game, I, th I thought I was watching Michael Voss again. You know, yeah. when Voss used to impose his will, will himself onto yeah. the contest. There's a lot of that. Danger had that look about him. You know, just out there. He was like a big bull, just raging. And uh, he was just so hard to stop. So he was just fantastic. I think all the positive plays happened on the back of that danger field work inside, especially in that first half. So the game's getting... The game starts and it's hot and, you know, it's, mm. it's, it, it's, something's going to break. And it breaks on the back of Tom Hawkins, who does... Everything or does something that everyone in the footy world knows. Your kids know, will know yeah, that Tomahawk yeah. tries and grabs the ball out of the ruck and kicks a goal. So he kicks, he does that, and you go, oh, no, come on, Tommy McCartan. You, you've just, whatever. This is round two. This is round two. So in round two, they had the ruckman compete with him at ruck stoppages, but Tom McCartan, he was there. He was almost sweating yep. Tom Hawkins, not worried about being the hit to or getting to another opponent. No, he was there specifically for if Tom Hawkins grabbed it out of the ruck. But you can see here... So, so this is the first one. You think, oh, Tommy, you just you were ball watching, yeah. which he yeah. was, and so yeah. then he's a step too late. Okay, fool me once, shame on George you, Bush. Gary. Yep. That's right. <laughs> you can't fool me again. <laughs> um, but the second time, he, he's, his head's not in the game. Yeah. So that right there, if you, I mean, that's great stuff. Um, we love the labs. If you go back and stop it right there, where Tom Hawkins has got the ball and Tommy McCartan, and we're not just putting it on Tom because the rest of the Sydney Swans mm, are yep. going to be aware of it as well. That's when you just go, this has overwhelmed them. Yep. This is like this is not a complicated right there with Tommy standing and the rest of them looking. This is not the complicated part of the game where you might get done, you know, with the tricks that Blitzarves and Stanley play with Stewart. This is... Everyone knows. Everyone knows. And, and, and people want to point the finger at Tom Hickey. 
Tom Hawkins has done this to everyone. Yeah, yeah he's done it to, to Max Gore. He's done it to the best ruckman in the competition because he, he is a big, strong, physical freak in, in that contest. So you, you just needed to, to be more switched on. Did, did, did it catch him off guard a little bit? Because he hasn't been doing it as much the last few weeks, Tom Hawkins, oh, doing Brent, those sure. forward... Fit. But no, I'm just saying, did, did, it catch, did it catch him off guard? I haven't done it the last few weeks. Get, get, First time, get, maybe. Getting back to coaching. Getting back to the case, they, they've obviously thought, geez, hang on, Hawkins v Hickey in a strength battle, we'll take that every day of the yeah. week. So we're just going to pop it on them early and see if they're ready for it. And the, they weren't ready for it. Should have got the George Bush grab. We needed the George. Why didn't you get the George Bush grab? Once, maybe. Yes. Not the next time. Yeah. Uh, celebrate uh, danger. I thought Blitz I don't know. You get, we'll just run through a few. It's like having an extra player out there, guys. Just it's early like 19 on. men on the field. He's it, the old fashioned utility. It's just amazing what he can do. Yeah, we've talked about all the roles he plays and all this sort of stuff, but. Just his hardness. And this is the thing that is... It's not lost on anyone how hard they were. There wasn't a moment that Sydney got any peace. No peace. Mm -hmm. And his hardness in and around the ball in the middle, I, I just... I knew, how, I knew how good he was. He's the All-Australian utility for a reason. But yep. he was so prominent early. So there's all that he brings in terms of his physical attributes... But I think what it does to the opposition mm. is, is it creates confusion. So mm. there were times yep. when he, he yep. started in as the middle and then he pushed hard forward in that first term on Parker and Parker didn't know, yeah. what, is he the ruckman? Yeah. Is he a midfielder? That's Do I need to go confused. with him? That, that's right. So it, it had Sydney off the chewy, mm. um, you know, just from a match-up point of view as well as his physical talents. And I think it's helped Stanley as well. Stanley yeah. played well and... You know, he sort of, you say, freeing him up. He's going, he goes behind the football. He's tough and, and hard. Yeah, yeah, so, so some of his contest stuff was really, mm. really impressive. I think you're right, Brownie, because it's given him, it's given Stanley a role outside of just yeah. I'm a tap ruckman. Yeah. So he goes, he goes back and he puts his arm across, you know, Joe Danaher in the yeah. prelim final, and he's. He's playing as a key defender as well, so he's constantly in the game. So, again, you, you put it down to just awesome well, that's coaching. Well, it gets back to your point. Reese Ma played really well. Maximising the talent at your disposal. Yeah. So, that's, you know, the, OK, he might... As a 100% pure ruckman, he's had his issues, you know. Yep. But as in this role, he's become a premiership player and a damn good yeah. one. Uh, and he's a terrific athlete, you know him, really. Oh, he's, he's, so he's one of the best. You think, oh, ruckman going back as a key defender. Well, I'm not sure about that. But he's a unique athlete. Yep. So he can go with the guys on the lead and jump with them. What about this kid, DeConing? It just goes and you know, plays on whoever comes his way. Doesn't his matter who quarter. it is. The whoever comes his way. Uh, Lance Franklin yeah. at times. It didn't matter. <laughs> and after this, we'll, go, we'll show you um, some numbers about how they've built this side and, and what they expect of their players when they draft them and the messaging that is sent to them in no uncertain terms. Now, DeConing was he's a bit of an exception because he had two years of being in the system in the development role, but there was no footy because of COVID, right? Yeah. So he's had two years in the system, played one game last year, so effectively he's a first year. And save for the Dacos boy, who was just superb, he's the best player, the best young player in the competition. But the extension of this is, you know, and we're told this that when these Geelong boys are recruited, drafted, however they get there, they're told that they're going to do their time in the VFL. Their apprenticeship will come through the VFL. And don't worry about what your mates are doing at other clubs. Mm. This is what we do. So look at this. You look at Atkins and Buse and Guthrie, O'Connor, Myers, Henry, and throw De Koning in there, who, as I said, had two years in development because there was yeah, no yeah. footy. That speaks volumes for what, yeah. you know, you, you just go, well, how does Tom Atkins play the role? Well, because he's had three years of yeah. cutting his teeth. So he, it's about he, how you sell the message then, yeah. Bernie. So explain that what your mates are doing at other clubs thing. Because yeah. they all come through the under-18s together, 100%. don't they? So we watched the under-18 game on Friday. I did Vic Country, Vic Metro. They're all best mates. They go, right, Revolt, you're off to St Kilda Brown. You're mm. going, yeah, great mates. You're going to Geelong. First... Yeah, and round by round 11, you've played nine games and you're saying to Brownie, you should see how good this is. You know, you get this, you're that, and you're going in front of the crowd. And, yeah. and you're going, you know, I'm running around in the VFL at yeah. the moment doing yeah. nothing. That's but I'm a great organiser. You're a great. You're in a great organisation. Like Jed Buse, this is the way like we Guthrie. build, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. then, because he, don't, he hasn't looked out of... Uh, um, it looked uncomfortable at all. At any stage during the year, maybe Dixon might have got a hold of him there for a few moments uh, in a game late in the year. But uh, I saw him early in the season. And it was incredible the maturity that kid had with his positioning as a key Unreal. defender. So clearly, Gaz, that two years in development, and Matthew Scarlett would have probably coached him and yeah. a number of other defensive coaches that were down there, and obviously this year more coaches as well. It's been outstanding and been unbelievable. The big names that he's been able to shut yeah. down. And then you have a game like that in the grand final. It's yeah, great. Good. So, and this is sums up. 
Geelong. You said it in round 16, I don't want to give you too much praise, but you said we might look back at this, or I don't know what round it was, and say this is the most obvious premiership of all. You tried Round you, three, I think. You, <laughs> you wanted us to get it out, but we couldn't find it. This here, this perfect season stuff, the second team in 14 years to be number one in both of these, right? Yeah. Last team that did that was a, a team called Geelong in 07. They won a grand final by 120 points. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I was with I was with uh, I was with a few old coaches yesterday, and uh, one of the boys said they had them as a six goal better team than ever, anyone else. Yeah. You know, if, if everyone was playing to their maximum, so they were clearly clearly the best team this year, and that just shows it. Like uh, so, we haven't seen those numbers in 15 years. Both Gareth. sides of the ball, Brownie. for and against yeah. their ability to move the ball from one end of the ground to the other, best. Yeah. Look at that, just just for and against, yeah. just amazing. So yes, they move it really well, but you can't move it against them. You know, so that's a, obviously so important. You go to the points from turnover, which we've spoken about all yep. the time, how important that is. So it's just tick, tick, tick. It's a great advertisement for yeah. sides that have been prepared to take the game on with the ball. So, yeah. so Geelong this year, Melbourne last year, uh, you know, Richmond. Sydney, for their, Sydney, changed Sydney, Sydney they're, they're a ball movement team. Yeah. Richmond in their, in their runs. Yep. Built on really strong defence and, and winning it back. But then when you win it, you go at the opposition. Yeah. So, and we're, we're better for it. Well, we're just starting. If you're a Geelong fan, stay with us because we'll take a break. In terms of perfect football days, if you could draw up a better one than Joel Selwood had on Saturday, <laughs> then you're a better man than I am because he... This has been built over five or six years. Like, there's been a lot of good people that got in and out of the program, and I hope they're sitting back really proud today because it just hasn't been 12 months in the making. Well, there it is. I don't know if you're a footballer whether you could be feeling any better than he would when he oh. lifted that cup. And he deserves every single accolade that comes his way. Uh, you summed it up that this footy club handled themselves with class, as did Dane Rampey and the, and the Sydney yeah. Swans, who needs to be acknowledged. Sure. It was a beautiful moment when he looked at him and said, you've got to pinch yourself. And mm. So the, the st I just heard a story today that he's, you know, he, the, the Levi, you know, we're, we're, oh everyone's gosh. heart melts Amazing. and all the stuff that you see post-game with Sam, the, the water boy, and yeah. the boot, you see... Every mother just loves Joel Selwyn. And then I heard today that he, he went and did all that beautiful <laughs> stuff, tossed the coin and ran back into the into the huddle pre-game and went, right, and just hit the... We're going to smash him. Yeah. Hit these words, you went, this is the beauty of the man. Yeah. You know, melts hearts Class with and, a ruthless and breaks buttons over yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a beauty. So yeah. he's, that's, that, that is what he is. And um, I don't know where he goes from here. It's not for us today to debate whether he... Nah hangs him up or not. We're just privileged to have watched him go about it and um It'd be a handy handy note to finish on though, wouldn't it? <laughs> we're not going we're not going there. We're not, it's not our that's not our job. But but yeah. but, but what is 
what is amazing is, you, you know, we, we were just talking in the break about the fact that the, the docs didn't give him a chance at the start of yeah. his career even mm. because he's, of his knees and his situation there and even... The and, first that, and that, and that, the that happens, you know. There, yeah, there'd be a lot of doctors yeah. working at clubs that would have said, you know, his knee's not going to be good enough, uh, you know, really to get him into his late 20s even. This is an uh, he, I loved him early. And he started on the bench on as the well, On the bench guys. again. And he's, he's walked off with these numbers at quarter time. So you want to make a statement. I mean, what happened after quarter time was... Uh, this one sort of even... Their it was over, up guys. That's it right. Was over. So this is, these are the moments that you take into account. Yeah. I would have been happy to give him a vote in the Norm Smith goes at quarter time. Yeah. Absolutely. He oh, was no, dominant. He just imposed himself on the contest along with his old mate, Paddy Dangerfield. So... But just great numbers. He only made that one stuff up when he kicked the ball across goal and it got chopped off, but they didn't get scored against anyway. It was a perfect day for him. Right up. So, Swans, we need to spend some time on them. Yeah. The, the, you know, the big, the, they failed the occasion. There's no nice way yeah. of saying it. And the horses, you know, we, we made a mistake owned with it. Reed, owned it, and all that sort of yeah. stuff. But, gee, I tell you, I'm not. They fumbled and double grabbed the footy as much as I've seen them for a long time. I put it down to July. No, I can't remember. Look at this. Just when you think you're out, right? It, you know, the, Look at Rowan. Rowan was unbelievable. They've had, a few, still going. they've had nine games in a row where this sort of stuff gets them out and home. Yeah. They just can't get out. There's no, there's yeah, no Rowan breathing again. space. Yeah, yeah. Un unreal. Uh, that, that, was a, that was a phenomenal piece of vision. Mm. Yeah. Um, but the, so, the reason so we showed that vision, though, is when you win nine in a row and that has served you so well, mm. like their ball use and ball movement, mm. and all of a sudden, time and time and time again, they're stopped in their tracks, it just wears you down. Yeah. You just don't go anymore. Because you just, it, 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 that's what I love the most about the Cats. Yeah, and you, you could sense it early. Though. There was not only the fumbles, so you tell they were nervous, which can be understandable in grand finals, but they were definitely nervous. And they were missing kicks as well, mm. guys, when they did have the opportunity. They put a couple out of bounds on the full. So, I thought 15 minutes in, you thought, oh, oh, geez, I'm, I'm a bit worried about the Swans here. A bit worried. Can they hold on and settle by quarter time? Otherwise, this game's going to be gone. And unfortunately for them, it, it was, guys. And I. I thought, you know, in hindsight now, hindsight's an easy thing, but I thought they were outcoached. You know, Sydney have done a fantastic job. I thought they were outcoached, obviously starting with the selection of Reid. Mm. You know, so Geelong were decisive. They drop yeah. Holmes or Holmes goes out with the injury. The symbolism. That, that, that. Yeah, that's right. They, go, they decide to go with Reid. Heaney, you know, for, uh, not until halfway through the second quarter, he goes into the centre bounce. They are getting smashed around the footy. This guy can't get into the game. One of your best players... He had to go into a centre bounce. Just get him involved. But this yeah, is your point earlier in the, in the night. What? It's about maximising the talent. Maximising your talent. Help uh, them. Help them. And I think that's what Chris Scott does really well. And I think this is the job of a senior coach, is that you have to get your best players into games early. Big games especially. You can't just have them down at Starvation Corner. Halfway through the second quarter, he goes in for his first centre bounce. Yeah. So it's just too far. The game's gone. It was all over by, by then. So that was a concern. And then I thought some other things. So they've left Parker on Dangerfield. Dangerfield just, you know, strutting around like he owned the MCG. Parker's their best ball winner. He's their bull. So they say, loose. right, I'm going to go cut him loose. Go head to head. Mills did the job on Dangerfield in round two. Mm. Why didn't Mills go to Dangerfield? You now, Paddy McCartan had to go forward when Reed came off. And they should have just rucked, you know, just rucked from the bench with McLean and Hickey. So, yeah, it was just several things I thought didn't get changed on the day. They need to make some moves. It was just, just nothing happened when the game looked out of hand very early in the game. It's exaggerated because of how good Geelong were. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the, the Parker yeah. one, you know, the, the week before he goes to Dugowie and completely takes Dugowie out of the game and finds a footy. So, you, you know, this is what we do. You look you look for these things and you pull these threads. In, in, they look in reactive, the didn't they? Don't you reckon in big games like... They Ge did. Geelong were hunting. They did. They were hunting the ball. They were hunting the Swans, whereas... Yep. To me, the Sydney mids, they look like they were reactive. And partly because their best ball winner is backpacking Patrick Dangerfield, yeah. just getting dragged to every contest. Well, so jo John Longmire said it just it yeah. did not resemble... It was alien. It did Foreign, not yeah. resemble anything like we would have expected a Sydney game to watch. And that's, that can w be what happens in a grand final too because as soon as you're, you're halfway through the first quarter and we're thinking it in the stands, yeah. the Sydney players are thinking, oh, gosh. Yeah. And as soon as you lose that little edge of belief... That's when you get blowouts, and, and that's what happened. So the, there weren't many positives, but if you can have your highest rate of game of what has already been a, you know, an unbelievably exciting career, then you're doing something right. And that's what Chad Warner managed to do in a grand final when his side got absolutely pulverised. And he tried to get them back into the game, didn't he? Like he, he, he started to 
um, roll the dice on several of the plays. This one probably sums it up the most. But he was at least having a crack, wasn't he? Thinking, right, we're going to roll the dice here. We're going to try some things. And if they come off, they come off. But we can't die wondering. And I thought he was fantastic. You know, one of the few Sydney guys could hold their head up. Probably only a couple, really. And he, post game, was just distraught. And yep. you know, the, the quotes that were attributed to him is, "I have tried my hardest." Yeah. Well, that's that's so reflected. He improvised. He tried his hard. He just tried things. And, and Robbie Fox was fantastic as well. It was an unusual, not unusual. I suppose when we looked at Cameron, you're thinking Ramp will just go to him. Tom McCartan will go to Hawkins, but. Robbie Fox goes to him. Mm. Um, so, yeah, and did a good job on Jeremy Cameron. Cameron got a right. goal at the end, though. But yeah. he, was a, he was fantastic. He was probably Sydney's best player. All anyone today on radio wants to know is what, what's it mean for Sydney? You know, what's it, is this going to do some long-lasting damage? And the, there's enough talent in there to think that they can bounce back. But this is the reality. Um, margins post 40, uh, 40 points. No team has won a final the following year since you know, back in wherever it was. Um, uh, 1995, I think it goes back yeah. to. So yeah. we suspect that there's more depth in, in this side and the young fellas are going to exactly. learn. There's a heap of young blokes in it. What do you think that is, Gaz? Is it the scars? Well, yeah, I think when you look at it, really, you can't deny that, you know. They, yeah. These are the sides that are good enough to get to the last day and then the following season can't win a final. Mm. And, yeah. you know, there's, um, and that's when they get smashed. You know, not not a close one because they're smashed. Yes, when yes. they were smashed, that's plus right. forty points. Yeah, that's yeah, right. So, so um, the oh, uh, you've got no doubts. There'd be, there'd be some scars. There's yeah. doubts in players. Players doubt themselves whether, you know, you know, how can I cope, can I cope with the pressure on the big stage? So you know, you've got to get past that now um, next year, and that's the challenge for Sydney. Scars and broken hearts. That's what mm. it was. So we're, the St Kilda 2010 team, so obviously I, that I was a part of. So mm. it was nine close game, ten draw, and then the, the replay you get smashed, and it was it was broken hearts. So what yeah. about the rest of the competition? Are you not in that? I mean, this is this is where the spotlight, is. the most glaring spotlight in footy, is on the biggest stage. So mm. now we sit back and we ask all these questions of a team who last week we're going, wow, how good have they been under pressure, and how good yeah. have they been able to absorb and maintain? And now we go, are they going to be able to bounce back next yeah. week because yeah. of the spotlight? It's hard to do. And that's why it even shows how great of his season it was for Geelong. Because remember in that, was it the prelim last year against Melbourne? And they got... 83 points. They got smashed. Yeah. Like, and you thought, Geez, well, there's the other there's side of the scars here, a, you know, they're going to come back from this. There's a bit of your demographic in that too. So I reckon a few of those sides were probably, you know, about to tip over. Yeah. I, I don't see that being the case. Well, you could have made spots, that case yeah. for the... Yes, for, for the Cats yes. at the yeah, end of yeah. last year. Or in 2020 yeah. when Richmond got them. Mm. Yeah. All right, if you're not a Geelong supporter, you're wondering how you're going to get better as a side. And uh, the trade period kicks off free agency on Friday and it is on. We'll have John Ralph in here next in our next segment and updates for some of the developments throughout the course of today because it's happening already. And this is where you'll get your up-to-the-minute news because this is the way you get better. Trading smart, Tyson Stengel, case in point. Is there another one of them out there?